Do you see here I've painted a green ground with a bit of blue over the top, ultimately over the top. And just to give me a mottled, interesting effect for the background of this woodland to start with. As I'm playing around with these background colours, uh, it's only a thin coat, so you can see the light shining through it. As soon as I start building up the heavy body, you'll be able to see this painting as a demonstration again. So this is the third in series talking about heavy acrylics, heavy bodies. Again, I'm going to use this technique of the flat brushes and painting with this technique, and it is very much a technique, it's very stylized, of the block work and building up your painting in little strokes and lines, the darks first, working to the highlights at the end, using as pure strong colours as we can, exaggerating the colours, and really enjoying this quality of the paint, this texture, this creaminess of the paint, as it dries fairly quickly, we can build them up. So what was my reaction to yesterday's? Um, I think uh, I can see why some artists use much more paint in their palette because you're tempted then to add more paint to put it in and not be sparing with it. Don't think you want to be sparing with paint with it, you want to really build up the textures into, into a three dimensional effect. Um, I was happy with the colours, they weren't sinking too much. It's a nice way of working. I can work both ways, of course. I could work the rollers over this and work those acrylics up over the top later, so something I might well do with the, with the two sorts of acrylic, normal and this. Um, we're waiting now to see what's happening with De La Rani because De La Rani has been taken over by an Italian company and uh, closing down. So Krilla Colour and the System 3 colours are going off the market um, and we're going to see what they're going to bring in, in return, whether they're just going to rename them or bring them out again or bring their own in. And there are other makes of heavy body, but so far they seem to be very expensive. I mean, these are expensive enough as they are, but the, the other makes I've seen are almost uh, a third again or, or double in some cases. But obviously uh, we have to be careful about uh, cost of materials, don't we, all of us. Um, so here we go, then we're going to have a go at this woodland scene, and uh, I'm going to push these warm colours and build them up from the background. Now again, using the stylized technique and keeping... I've seen this done with pastels as well. I've often seen pastels done where they're just going one direction only with the pastels, and it gives a very interesting effect. But we're going mainly one directional, in downward strokes and through on this. Right, off we go then. Let me just, let me just discuss how I'm doing these trees. It's quite an interesting way of doing it. I'm actually taking two colours at a time here. I'm taking my very deep Prussian blue and a little touch of sap green together letting them come onto the brush together and then when I place them onto the uh, canvas I can work both the colours almost in stripes together bringing in a colour whenever I want one over another to get this striped effect of the birch trees I'm going to bring in some lighter blues shortly to really work into those and work this down so I'm working it not in lines like this all the time, I'm drawing some of these in, yes, but I'm working these in in little strokes horizontally. You can work these branches both ways. It's a lovely way to work. You see all these different techniques we can use. We want to use the best method and technique and materials for the purpose. And what I'll do is I'll just put a little bit of that light um, some of the lighter colours on there. Again I'm going to use two colours at once. I'm going to use the um, magenta and a little bit of cerulean blue just to start getting the feel of these trees coming up here. But this thing, we are playing with techniques today. We are deliberately being a bit technique-y. Now I can put it on one colour on one side of the brush and another colour on the other side of the brush so then I can get these mixtures of effects whenever I want I can just bring back the other colour from the other side of the brush really push your colours, really find your colours really enjoy working one of these up for the background you can see how the heavier paint <coughs> is going over this um, canvas with the light shining through the back of it now and the light isn't coming through the heavier paint so it's giving you a good idea about that a loose way to work isn't it? Down here the same, we want to start building up. Now if we were painting this in a more photographic way I'd be doing more strokes this way. As I'm doing a more stylized impressionist piece I'm going to use the strokes mainly vertically 
we've got our warm and cool blues. But the warm blues are now put in these very cool turquoises. And you can see that the background is gradually disappearing into this paint. That the light is no longer shining through it as the paint gets thicker and thicker. And I'm working up these little textures as well. Right, I think we're ready to start um, working up some of the warms actually. I would have liked burnt sienna in my palette but it's something I haven't got hold of in these paints as yet. So I'm going to have to make a use burnt umber and uh, some red at the moment to give me a moment it's very red. Take it down a little bit of purple. This is what we do here. I'm going to put a little bit of light into this yet, remember, so it isn't just this one colour by any means. So I haven't got burnt sienna, I've used burnt umber, a little orange, and um, cadmium red, and a little bit of purple. Most of it's happening behind these trees, so I'm leaving these trees just blowing through here. Different crisscross brush strokes to get in the background here. Of course it's coming right through here onto here and bring those leaves down into here as well. We're not going to paint every little leaf in, we'll put some texturing in soon but not quite yet. Just want to get the feel of them at first. Down through into here. So, some lovely colours starting to happen, isn't there? So, using my bigger brushes, I'm going to go down to smaller ones as we go along. I seem to remember this picture comes from a photograph I took in Wiltshire, up, um, not far from Devizes, not far from Marlborough, in fact. And we'll start to make some of these more golden yellows. Some beautiful, and I can use this, a lot of these colours I've got. This is process yellow now. A lot of these colours I can use just as they are. Now this process yellow is looking very... Let me take some um, cadmium deep to go with it. <coughs> it's looking very slimy. Again, I'm not happy with the yellows in almost any paint. But that process yellow there in lemon was certainly very light. And let's start to really bring in these textures behind the trees here. Now you can see these cools working against these warms here a lot more. The trees are now standing out. And the light is a lot softer across this left hand side so I'm not going to put quite so many shadows in here and uh, light highlights in here. I'm just going to tickle them around here and blend them slightly more so that the whole thing is a lot softer. And you can just see this green gently showing through as they come across. It might seem as if I'm overdoing the jellos at the moment, but I don't think I will be when I get the other colours in. So these are the colours I'm more concerned about. This is the lemon yellow, the process yellow, and some white. You see it's actually quite slimy. So the lighter I go, the more of these effects of sunlight coming through here are going to work. The stronger my differences between the lights and the darks. Important that we have these very bright, strong lights and darks to give the effect of sunlight. This is how we get the effect of sunlight, is a larger range between the lights and the darks. Well, I've been away now for an hour or so, and come back to the dry painting. It's interesting to see how the colours have sunk a bit. Obviously the uh, depth of it sunk back into the canvas, but the lights have sunk down a bit now, so I want to start hitting it again with much lighter yellows. Putting the colour on fairly thickly now so that it uh, doesn't sink again. And I've come from my warm yellows right through to my cool yellows now. I'm just putting on these lemon yellows and uh, whites. 
We've got a nice cascading of this, these lovely light colours coming through here now. Lots and lots of beautiful colours happening we want to find in this impressionist piece. With beautiful heavy bodied acrylics. Certainly showing uh, another path, aren't they? Find all these lovely rich oranges and pinks and creams going on through here. Going down into the foreground of the leaves. Uh, this is where the green is showing through, of course, because I, I started with the green, didn't I? So that's why I'm able to now pick up on that and let it glow through tints of light, which are going to have very, very light blues and turquoises and so on going on back here now. And we'll start off with the light turquoises, I think. And we'll start to feel in between these branches a little bit more. In the trunk, just a moment. Let's just get the base colours in. It's right down to here. The light shines between the trees. So these cools will bring out the warm. So if we put the opposites in, all of it's cool. Light against dark, rough against smooth, you can gradually pick out these beautiful colours we can get. Just pushing them a bit. As I say, the beauty of these heavier paints is that they are staying, that the colours aren't sinking too much and I can keep this vibrance if I wanted. Add a little bit of ultramarine now. A wee bit blue. I'm painting fairly thinly at the moment. Get in these lovely, rich, cool, and warms. A little bit more pink with that. Just take it a bit more purple and down a fraction, and we'll start to bring in these tones that are coming in across the pathway here. And whilst we're on these very light ones, a little bit of very, very light green going up in the sky. It really doesn't mean it's going to be very light. Plenty of white in this and just tint my colours in. Now, to go to very light pink in places. We have a mixture of colours, as I say, going through this. So we're going to take some white and a little bit of the again, just off a tint, and we'll start to work some of this in, get this broken colour effect of light coming through, to give a warmer feel to the brightness behind there. Uh, cadmium red is a much warmer red, so it's going to give us a totally different feel here. The composition out. I'm going to go back to my really deep oranges and reds a little bit. I just want to come back in with some of these warmer, really start to play with these colours, bring them back again. So we can really, we got to this stage, uh, we can really enjoy ourselves. I mean, Because I've got the hard work, the base work done, I can now come back into picking up these different colours, I hope. And suddenly the picture starts coming together. Now I want some very, very light creams again. Back to my cool creams, in fact, but even just a tint of it this time. Put some more paint out soon, but I'm alright at the moment. So Lemon yellow and white, just a touch of it, that's all. And let's see how that comes across here into the lights. Shining through, glimmering through up here. 
little bit stronger into the yellow now. through here to make these colours a bit better there. So we've got some beautiful effects. I hope you're seeing now what these heavy bodies can do. Alright, that's that. Now greens. Before I go back in with some darker branches again because we've done our dark branches earlier but I still want to bring them back. Doing my brush out well because these colours are starting to dry on my brush. Okay, let's look at these greens that are happening back here. Been meaning to do a woodland scene for a while, but it's time to get round to getting motivated and doing them and the reason for doing them and so on. So I've put some cadmium orange with some sap green there. I just want to go a little bit greener. Places, perhaps with the blue are in. These greens, these warm greens coming through. And the same warm greens happening just down. Some of this here. Picture's almost done, I think. Let's get some uh, more turquoise greens going. Don't separate things out is a big trick. It's not just brown trees, blue sky, green grass things linked together and we've got to have that happening on here. Wherever there's one colour it's going to start coming into another otherwise it seems too separate. So these colours like a, a mesh of fish netting across things will help to hold things together. And there's our picture almost done. Now I want to come back with some of these darks. I may have to use a river on some of them I think. Let's see what we're going to do. Let's take a river there and take some very deep blue, purple, get that a nice consistency. Let's just see a little bit of green to it as well. I want it fairly dark and see if we can pick out some of these branches, these beautiful branches that are happening through here. So these darks are coming right down through branches that are coming into here, thick to thin, thin to thick, and the branches always go thin to thick, they never go thick, thin, thick, thin, unless there's something wrong with them. I'm quite pleased with this work, it's coming out as well as I could have expected. And I hope you're getting a lot of pleasure from this. You're not getting as much pleasure as I am painting it, I don't think, but you know I can have a go yourselves. So if we look at this heavy body paint, a lot brighter, straight there, haven't varnished it yet so the colours will come out even more when it's varnished. But we get these lovely effects with it. Let's get in and have a closer look shall we. I've built this up. Next, it's going to be a big London scene at night. <laughs> 